let's try and get into this topic a little earlier. I know that I'm boring you because you know all of this stuff and it's like I'm speaking about stuff again, but in this context, it's relevant, you know? Sustainability is directly linked. It's as if everything's like interconnected under this concept of sustainability because to help save our world or help save our life on the planet is really sustainability. It's, it's, it's about sustaining keeping it going and if we're chopping down all the trees and we're killing our planet and whatever and we're reaching the limits of our planet's ability to bear the onslaught of our consumption and materialism and capitalism and so on we've re we've reaching the edge of this sustainability and of course rising temperatures global warming all of these factors are linked to our unsustainable way of life. I'm just going to go over the basic premises of last week. So help save our world speak 96, life altering events and sustainability continued. Now, life altering events can direct or redirect humanity to living a sustainable way of life. And that's what we're trying to do is we we're trying to make people aware that experiencing these extreme life altering events, like a near death experience, doesn't have to be the end of your life. Instead, you can perceive them as gifts of insights and wisdom, and which is awaking you and pushing you towards new beginnings. And of course, just like the flooding you're experiencing in Florida, it's like, bringing it home to you that if we don't live sustainably, living in Florida is not going to be an option. And uh, then, of course, I went through a whole lot of examples last week on what are life-altering events, just different examples. Many of them are your life-sustaining wake-up calls, bringing you back into alignment with the flow of life and sustainable living on this planet. And then hidden in those lessons, in those experiences, are a whole lot of necessary lessons for you to, to learn and grow. And that's what life, one of the reasons for our existence are um, as conscious human beings, learning responsibility. And really, I mean, responsibility is really at the core of this whole thing. If we don't live responsibly on the planet, we're done for. And then, of course, I brought up the fact that we are guided and there are so many ways of connecting with that guidance and it could be your intuition, your gut feelings, voices in your head, and then even asking for guidance and, and wisdom of the consciousness of the universe, the many entities which you can connect with and speak to and, and actually gain this guidance and then you can learn from your lucid dreams and so on. And then I went in, in and I spoke about how we could uh, connect intuitively and explain those different things. And uh, like in terms of breathing and, and getting yourself into a centered state of consciousness in the now, and then connecting it through all of these different levels from like your inner being to your environment, to the greater universe, and all of the consciousness within the universe and literally becoming consciously connected to everything. And then of course, movement is fundamental to change. So if you don't do anything, you're not gonna change. So those were the premises on which we started this thing. And if you wanna read more about it and go back, it's there, it's all in writing. Now, starting this week, even if you are guided, you do make your own choices and some choices are better than others, which of course ultimately decides which direction or what your path is going to be. So your choices are vital to where you end up. And of course we spoke about us having a vision and then the mission and the purpose to get to where ideally we would like to be, which is in a, fair, happy, healthy, sustainable future. 
So if we have that as our focus and we make our choices about staying on that road in alignment to get there, then we're going to be in the place we want to be. Now, although change is uncomfortable, uncomf you need to trust yourself and step into those changes. Now, remember, consciousness drives subatomic waves and energy changes. Now, this is it's a whole conversation on its own. It also drives thought and action, which is proven in subatomic physics and in perceived wave particle duality of light and the double slit experiment. And of course, the collapse of the wave function with observation. Just by observing, we change the outcome of those particle wave duality experiments. And of course, perception, how you see it, predisposition, what you're coming from, if, like what background are you coming from, what paradigm are you coming from, and the perspective, where you're looking at it from, in terms of your perspective. Now, your perspective can be influenced by many factors. These are all like major factors in what we perceive to happen, which are, of course, big topics and, you know, too big to discuss yet. Those are really, really interesting, unless you want to get into that. I mean, anyone want to comment on those things? Go ahead. Anyone? Perception, predisposition, perspective, affecting reality or our perception of it. Yeah, well, you know, Dennis, it's, yeah, it's critical, I think, to what we're all dealing with. Um, if someone's perception, if it's clouded, clouded or, you know, not, not working properly, or if they just choose to interpret their perception as something else than what it is, and that goes along with the, you know, an object under observation changes its behavior. I think that was one of the, the aspects you referred to in physics. Um, yeah, people are just not going to live authentically. Either they'll, they'll think they're being observed, so they act differently. Um, and that sometimes has to do with peer pressure or, or um, you know, occultist kind of attitudes. Um, certainly there's enough of that against sustainability and the conversations against it that people don't even believe what they see anymore. So I think it's, it's really important for this conversation um, and how we arrive at uh, changing minds ultimately. Yeah, I agree. There's just so many competing disinformation and whatever, instead yeah. of just seeing reality for what it is, you know? I like that, really do. Alex? Well, that's, that's kind of what we're up to, though, isn't it? It's like there's if everybody just were present and and could could think on their own, I'd say this stuff doesn't make sense or they would say this stuff doesn't make sense. But because they've been propagandized <laughs> and accultured and domesticated uh, throughout our entire lives, um, it's shedding all that stuff off before we can actually get back to authenticity and, and connection with our earth. And, you know, people like to travel and pay big money now to go to untouched places. But what's happened to their home and why aren't they uh, doing something about what the powers and the money structures uh, that be are doing to their own locality? Uh, never mind. Uh, you know. So I think that that's just such a huge hurdle, as we know. And, uh, you know, we, we, the, the subtitle of this series is uh, Change Your Conversation, Change the World. And their conversations um, are not even their conversations. They're ones that they hold. Uh, and I think that's a, just a huge issue is how do we get masses and masses to change their conversation without relying on the same tricks and tactics that have brought us to this situation, which is manipulation, domination, control, uh, distortion, diffusion, um, misdirection, et cetera. So <laughs> just agreeing with you. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's really, really it, it. You know, it's like what I, I'm trying to do is try and bring the 
obvious apparent truth about the situation to them it's like mm. you posting those pictures of the flooding in florida it's like yes the, the obvious truth it's like it's right here in front of you can't you see it and it'd be like oh no it's like the cyclical change of uh, from one ice age to the next at this rate no right yeah but, but they don't they, they might see it once happening there and then the news media will ignore it or that the news i guarantee the news media is not reporting that flooding in the streets to the extent that you're seeing it um maybe not maybe this time it is yeah. but um but it generally will be directing towards i mean if florida has control of that they're not going to be showing that as look our whole society's in collapse like don't come here no, yeah. they're going to put some spin on it. Absolutely. Yep. It's got to look the way they want it. Yep. Alex, Brendan, anyone want to comment on that? I um, just want to agree. I mean, uh, the, the media and the way it is determines the information on how we're supposed to perceive it or how they want us to perceive it. I mean, between media, religion, and all the the noise entering our heads. We don't have a chance to think for ourselves at the end of the day. And when we actually do take a moment to think for ourselves, we do realize that there's something wrong, but we are no, uh, no way capable of dealing with it in any um, personal extent. Um, yeah. Or so we perceive it to be, you know, too big for us. It's got to be for someone else to do. Yeah, we, we don't feel empowered at all to, yeah. to take a step towards it because we've ceded a lot of that power and haven't used it in our life. So it's it's not a surprise that when we need it, it's like, gee, I just don't feel capable. Exactly. And the people that are using their power, <laughs> as we know, are ostracized and marginalized and uh, demonized. And, uh, you know, I look at someone like uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, from New York City. Yes. So, yeah. You probably heard of her. Yeah. Now, there's a woman who is just using incredible power of presence and intelligence and, and passion and awareness uh, to speak her truth. And, you know, they, they demonize her as this, this crazy Spanish woman from New York, you know. And if one listens to her, <laughs> um, she can be more cogent than anybody in Congress and above that I've ever heard speak. So, yeah. Um, that's the problem with the world. And Dennis, I'm sure you feel some of that as well. It's like, wait, I have all this good stuff and you guys aren't listening. What's going on? Um, and well, what's going on is the, the natural flow of the, the world as it is today, um, unfortunately. Well, I don't, I don't know if we could term that natural. The unnatural flow <laughs> is really what it is. Yeah, it's, that's true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we don't want to blow the world today. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like that whole thing is of oh, it's human nature. It's just that's just the way humans are. It's like, no, they're not. You've conditioned yeah. them to be like that. That is the paradigm that you're forcing or pushing. Yes, and, and I do agree, uh, Alex. You know, we do feel like we're not empowered, but in actual fact, every choice we make is making a difference. It might not seem so significant. And that goes back to the starfish on the beach, lady mm. throwing starfish into the ocean. Some guy comes past and says, what are you doing? You're not making a difference. Look how many there are. There's like, you're never going to make a dent in this. Uh, and he says, you're not going to make a difference. He says, she says, well, I just made a difference for that one. And she throws yeah. another. So it's that concept of if we stop thinking that we have no power and we just start doing that is the power, because just by setting the example and being the one that's throwing them back, other people see what you're doing and they start to gather with you and throw back. And before you know it, there's a whole lot of people all ganging together, throwing starfish back and helping the whales back into the sea and, and you know, pushing dolphins back in to, so they survive and, and protecting the... the um, the uh what are they called <laughs> turtles uh, the turtles and ah. and the, yeah they, they, there's there's that becomes this wave of people who care about the oceans and it's like 
Nobody seems to be listening to Cortez, but I listen and yeah. you're listening. It's like, yeah. Well, she got so, elected. So. Uh, uh, yes. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing that she did. And she's like one of those leaders that there are a bunch of people around the country dreaming who are intelligent that want to be her. And so she set a precedent. It might not happen now, but maybe in the next election cycle and, and so on. And that will gather more momentum. So it, it's the whole thing of, in the beginning, it doesn't look like anything, but if you put the effort in, that exp exponential growth will happen. You've just, got to, you've just got to believe that your one starfish is enough, you know? That's right. Absolutely. And it's not just a case of, you know, one person brings many people. It's also within your lives as well. Like I mentioned before in previous episodes, I mean, the moment you actually start to put your feet in the soil, put your hands in the soil, suddenly you realize there's soil around you. Then you start to look at the growth around you. You look at, you can see the areas that you can grow. And all of a sudden you're putting in seeds, you're putting in plants, you're putting, before you know it, you've got a garden. And before you know it, you, you, you're starting the thought process to, you know, how can I like get water cheaply? How can I store water? How can I keep water on my land? You, you, you're starting those thought processes over and over in, in, in your mind. And once you plant the seed, it grows. Regardless what that seed is, once you plant it, it grows. Whether it's a seed of thought, whether it's a thought process, whether it's a movement, whether it's a communicating with others, whether it's getting people involved, it's once the seed of thought is planted, it can only grow from there. I absolutely love that. Before you comment, Chris, <laughs> um, the, um, the, I absolutely love that. And, and, and the thing is, Mother Nature multiplies what you put in. It's like this natural conspiracy to combine with what you plant as a seed to give you more sunlight, to create more leaves, to create more seeds, and it just multiplies outward. It's, it's like it's conspiring. Life conspires with life to further life. So if you're part of that conspiracy, contriving to actually grow life around you just by planting that seed, just by walking out and putting your feet in the earth, just by sticking your hands in the, the dirt and smelling the, the humus. It's like you've created that connection to life and you are now part of that growing of life into the future. I love that. Mm -hmm. Kurt? Well, you brought up a word that's dear to my heart, conspiracy. And I think I've mentioned before that the roots of conspiracy are breathing together, literally. Um, con together and spirare uh, is to breathe. So we are inherently part of that by being a living thing that has lungs, right? We're breathing together with, we are nature, basically, as we said many times. The interesting thing is what we breathe out is often the toxins that we don't need. And if we move that over to our thoughts processes that we're putting out, they also take flight just naturally because that's what things do. We contribute to the world and it impacts the world. Similar to kind of, well, not similar, kind of, but similar to the butterfly effect where a simple little action somewhere out uh, in the ocean, if a butterfly ever makes it out that far, uh, can have a huge impact and create turmoil and then grow and grow and grow. Uh, I think the same thing can happen with good thoughts and good actions, and that's what we're up to. Um, and we get to realize that there are many people that are up to not paying attention to what they're putting out, and uh, they're also creating those waves of interference and chaos uh, that we're experiencing today. So how do we get all of that aligned? Well, we keep on doing what we're doing is think these good thoughts and put out good intentions and uh, do good things in order to move the planet towards a, a conscious and intentional sustainability, not accidental. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's part of what civilization is here for, is just to see if we can ever get to that point. So we're doing our part. Yeah. 
I like that analogy of of waves and interference waves. And you know, when you will achieve real impact is when there's synchronicity of waves, and then they go into the huge waves and they have so much energy and power, and then it's flowing forth into the universe. And that's the, the thing about uh, other wave patterns is when the wave's trying to go up and another wave comes in the opposite direction and it's going down, it takes away from the wave. And ultimately, your impetus and your, your forward motion and flow of waves creating this incredibly life-sustaining future depends on us building the momentum of those waves in synchronicity together, buffeting those swells, getting them into alignment, getting humanity into alignment and flowing forward into the future. And we've got to become in some way impervious to the interference and the, the noise and the whatever, and just keep on focusing on building our our waves. I like that. Mm. Beautiful. Anyone else on that concept? All right. So we, we got to perception, predisposition, perspectives as major factors of what's happening. So with this in mind, life is about desiring something, focusing on it, clearly perceiving it in your mind's eye and asking for it. That's like planting the seed to the universe. You're like, universe conspire with me. Let's make this happen. Then being willing to receive it, of course, because some of us feel that we don't deserve it and we, we don't allow it to come to us or don't really understand when it has come and accept it with gratitude. And so stepping into it and focusing on it and practicing doing it until you and your environment become it is essential. Anyone want to comment on that? I agree. You agree. Okay, good. So do you want to help save our world and begin living in a living, thriving, pollution-free, peaceful, fair, happy, healthy, sustainable, and abundant future? Do you? <laughs> I think, is that not our, our, our main objective? And then the next statement is, then if that is so, choose it, focus on it, and practice creating that world with trust and belief in yourself, in others, in Mother Nature, and, of course, in your guides and universal wisdom and so on, because they're all conspiring to give you what you want and help you to survive, thrive, and manifest that sustainable living paradise on Earth. Any comments there? No, I, I think that attitude is, is what will get us through, is, is believing that that's what the universe is here for, is to deliver us to what we really seek. So, and, and even the things that don't seem to align with that, the circumstances and just unimaginable occurrences that, that show up in our life, if we look at them through that lens of the universe is conspiring to give us what we want, then we can accept them and use them to move forward rather than get stuck with them and sidetracked uh, by the distraction that they, that we allow them to be. If we don't see past the immediate reaction to them. Yeah. Well, like that, that uh, taking it personally is really like a mm. big mistake. Ignore yeah. what other people say because 90% of it, the time it's their issue or actually even worse than that. They're just repeating what media and every different station repeating the same media again and again and again, just like you get in America. It's um, that they, they're repeating the party line. What was written in the newspaper? I'll read the newspaper today. So I'm going to talk about what's, what's written in the newspaper. They, the, the, the idea of independent thought and creative thinking and critical thinking is so foreign to the average person, especially in America, that they're so 
being, you know, turned away from seeing what's happening and seeing the truth that they, they literally, for, for, for the noise that's going on around them, they cannot see beyond. You agree with that? Totally. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, you do have a choice. You could choose to ignore the truth, the obvious signs or guidance because of fear, blind belief, or just do so, or just decide to do nothing. Or you could just continue as you are doing a whole lot of stuff, living out the destructive paradigms, destructive perma scheme paradigm, making the rich richer and more powerful, working really hard to achieve that at the expense of all life on Mother Earth. And that's all leading us, all life, to extinction. Whatever your reasoning is, that is your choice. However, not listening and not changing when you should have results in increasingly significant misalignment and more difficult decisions and changes later. The longer you leave it, the more severe the consequences you suffer. So when the crunch eventually comes on your chosen road of life, you will perceive and experience these as extreme life-changing events. However, this is so important. You're seldom the victim of what accidentally happened or coincidentally happened to you. You're more often than not only the victim of your own choices or to a greater extent, a victim of your own choices. Comments? Well, life isn't what happened to you. It's what you do with that experience. So. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, we make, make up how it. bad it is. Yeah. It, sorry, Alex, go ahead. And what you make of it. I mean, you and can what you make of it, right. Take every circumstance that's ever happened to your life, you can make it positive in your mind, or you can make it negative and traumatic. It's up to you. Sure. I, you know, we, we all obviously have developed into the human beings that we are, that react the way we do, et cetera. And uh, we've seen examples of just people overcoming horrendous circumstances to be very successful. Uh, probably one of the most visible over the past 10 or 15 years or more is uh, Nick Wojcik, I think his name is, from Australia, who has no arms and legs, um, just born deformed. Um, and has become an amazing motivational speaker, is married to a beautiful woman, and I think he has a, a child or two. And if you ever see the video of him, you know, he struggles to climb steps with, with legs that are cut off at the upper thigh and, uh, you know, has a little piece of flesh hanging from, from one arm and nothing on the other side. Yet he gets around and he speaks and he... Uh, he lets people know that if he can do it, you can too. And I think most people react like, yeah, but you're special. And, you know, well, <laughs> um, do we all have to suffer that in order to, to own up to our power? Uh, I hope not. And I think that's one of the things that he says is that, uh, you know, you have it in you. You just need to, to, to allow it uh, to manifest itself. Yeah, but I mean, I also think that it's a, lot, a large extent also media propaganda and all of that and how how we perceive those without limbs i mean uh yeah the, the discrimination against people that are, aren't, aren't what we consider normal or is so is so bad that once you're in that situation and you're no longer normal you know no longer fit the status quo now all of a sudden you don't fit in you're not part of the the grand scheme of things. It's not true. I mean, you can make a life of your own in those circumstances. You can choose to see life in a different way or choose to take on this new obstacle that's been put in front of you and tackle it the best you can. It's up to you to see how you're going to travel this road going ahead. Otherwise, you know, if you're going to make it difficult for yourself, 
then fine, put a gun against your head and shoot yourself because that's exactly what you're doing. But by making your life difficult and make it a trauma or such a bad thing or, you know, all these um, horrible negative um, steps or thoughts, you're literally blocking yourself. You're putting the obstacles in your way. Yeah. And the mental health industry is having a bumper century, I think, as well. You're right. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's awesome stuff, both of you. I think the tougher your life and the harder your circumstances, actually is quite often your greatest gifts. Because, mm. yeah, he's turned his biggest, the most difficult thing you can possibly imagine into his gift of public speaking. I mean, that's genius. Yeah. So how you perceive it can decide whether you have an amazing life or you don't. So awesome stuff, Alex. I love that. So remember, small incremental changes are much easier to make than extreme changes. You could easily have made those minor changes along the way if you had just listened and done what was necessary at the time, without which you become sick or are forced into drastic changes changing your subconscious programming, changing your habits. And and even if you can't do that and you don't see a way out, you could even die from it or commit suicide. uh, Or ultimately, if we don't make the changes, we will become extinct. Like it or not, living our best life is a journey of endless choices and adjustments and realignment into love, balance and harmony with your actual life and then with all other life and with mother nature, the hands in the earth thing that Alex is talking about and the greater universe. Because it's not as if we're separate. So what we become as consciousness then becomes part of the greater universe. And then, of course, the greater universe becomes this more positive universe from which more living positive beings come from. So I I think we mustn't just think of our consciousness and our lives as living up to that point. We must think of it as what we leave behind into, into the past and what we project into the universe and into the future. So it's so much greater than just the individual choices that you're making now. And if you make those like positive, inspiring and and incredible choices, they expand out way beyond anything you can comprehend. Anyone want to comment there? Uh, So like it or not, living your best life, okay, is a journey of endless choices, adjustments, realignment. I always think of this infinity sign moving forward into the future. And every time you hit the the middle, all right, sorry, I'm just trying to get it a little bit higher for you. Every time you you, you hit the, the middle of the infinity sign, that is traveling in alignment down a straight line um, into the future. And that's that, those massive waves all flowing in one continuous flow into the future that is your ideal alignment and that is sort of like in the perfect now in a silent universe flowing forward that's what we're doing we're flying through space in this galaxy and everything and the whole galaxy is moving forward in this incredible movement through space so there are these incredible flows and that alignment with a planet life and so on is that ultimate place where where we need to be flowing and but of course we we're, we're not perfect we're humans so we we fall out of alignment this way and then we come back and then we fall out of alignment that way and we come back but all the time it's this continuous movement forward through space so falling out of alignment is not the problem it is realizing that you have fallen too far and you, you, that you need to come back. And that's what this whole process is about. Sustainability is if you stay within a reasonable distance from that crossover point and you keep on coming back, then you're sustaining that forward motion. But the moment you fall 
way out. That's where death and extinction and all of those horrendous things happen. So it really is about coming back into alignment with to prevent those extreme and those life altering events are those moments where you've gone too far and, and it's like, come on, you've got to come back. You've got to come back. This is your last chance. And if you don't, well, that's it. So like it or not, living your best life is a journey of endless choices. You make a decision, you end up, you, you fall out, fall in and adjustments and realignment into this love, balance, and harmony with that flow, that crossover point moving forward through space in harmony with, of course, your life, which is fundamental. If you don't drink enough water, you're going to die. If you don't eat enough food, you're going to die. So with your life, all life, with all other life, because we are one ecosystem and we're all interdependent. So we need to be in alignment with that. And that, and greater mother nature, not just including all life, but the life of the planet as a living organism with tidal heart beating and currents, blood flowing down the veins of the continent. All of those things or processes are this living oxygen replenishing atmospheric cleansing rainfall and all these processes is just like living mother earth that we need to live in harmony with the flow of and it's always about we make a mistake we need to correct and come back into alignment make a mistake come back into alignment but if we don't come back into alignment with life and that flow of mother mother earth mother nature and help save our world we won't exist anymore anyone alex Good. Yeah, i completely agree <clears throat> you, yeah. you, you you need to be in alignment not just with yourself but with nature with your environment the things that you eat the things that you listen to you know the amount of propaganda and everything you you allow to enter the noise that you're allowed to enter i should say everything's got to be in alignment it's got to be in reasonable mouthfuls that you can stomach hmm. yeah i i have it brought up a, a thought that some of the stuff that we're talking about is not natural and intuitive it's, it's based on our societal upbringing right so even if we can find uh, our natural flow and our natural uh, alignment um, with with all that is, there still is just so much of the nonsense that we need to shed. And, um, you know, the, the world is diverse, nature is diverse. Um, so that we are in alignment, I think makes, makes a lot of sense uh, with, with the flow of it. And at the same time, diversity exists. And sometimes it's helpful uh, to have something contrary to the alignment so that we, we can get up to something. Otherwise, I, I would I would guess, because I haven't been in full alignment for extended periods of time um, to know what the results are. But I would guess that part of what we're doing here is in response um, and maybe somewhat reaction to that we are out of alignment. Um, so on some level, I think a, a good amount of just a little bit of uh, incongruence uh, will help us. I think we're more at this point than maybe at this point um, in the world. Um, and I guess I guess I'm saying, yeah, alignment is, is what we strive for, and we, we get to accept that um, there may always be some some non-alignment, which will then allow us to attenuate: are we in alignment or not? And I think. Uh, for many people, they don't realize they're out of alignment because they have no idea of anything else. So having that, you know, that little chaos in there, um, that noise, um, if they're at anywhere, at any level aware, will help them then understand something's wrong with this picture. Um, and maybe they'll take an effort um, to do something about it or not. And I think we've seen uh, many, many people choose it or not. Yeah. Yep. I think 
the big question, and, and I think that's what we're trying to do with this whole sustainability section is, is to establish what is that natural alignment that we should be following versus mm. very out of alignment. I mean, there's always going to be varied degrees of out of alignment for most people. I mean, nobody's going to be perfect all the time. That's why that there's these massive variations of out of alignment. Um, it's just being way when we way off when we go and chop down the whole amazon jungle we know we are way off you know this is not something we should have even started let alone completed um yeah. it should never have happened that we know is a way off situation so what is not way off where are we heading towards to be more in alignment with nature in general and generally speaking i mean until we at a point where we establish ourselves, I mean, we're not going to be our 12 year old selves, you know, at the age of 62, but we can journey towards that and try and keep as fit as possible and healthy as possible and eat as well, keep our mind strength up and, and go on that journey of bringing ourselves within alignment from the point at which we're at. And there will be a version of alignment at the age of 60, 70, 80 for us. We will never be what we were at 10, 20, 30 years old, but we can be a version of that. Mm. Yeah, I, that, that age thing is, is an interesting concept, but what we lose in certain uh, areas, I think we gain in keeps and bounds in other areas, depending on how long we uh, actually sustain our lives as healthy and, and whatever to the best of our ability. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're designed to go through individuation processes throughout our life um, because our body changes, um, the, the needs of society change us. Um, so it's kind of built in that uh, we do grow. Um, <laughs> doesn't mean it will happen for everybody the body will grow uh, for the most part um, but but the mind yeah it, uh, it needs to be be paid constant attention and at those at those change points that are built into our life hopefully we will pay attention to them and not just kind of breeze through or get blindsided by them and say okay I live my life up until this point that way is it working or not is there something I can do better and then we choose to live a different life until we, we question it again. So yeah, I think it's a natural process. And you know, I, I guess just based on the temperament and the society that you're in, either people will help you get through it and teach you that it's coming and set you up uh, with, with good intentions and awarenesses uh, in your younger years so that you can continue that uh, as you grow older. And start to make those choices about who I am I who am I in the world and you know how am I being in the world and what do I want to uh, leave in the world uh, on a daily basis not moment to moment <laughs> I think the awareness of sustainability of life becomes very apparent as you get older it's like oh my gosh I slipped I didn't exercise and I'm really feeling it now oh my gosh, I you know, ate the wrong food. And you start to realize how important really living your best self is, like only in that years, because in younger years, you don't really sort of, you know, you don't have to, you know, you can do anything you want until it catches up with you. So just one more thing, and then we're, we're at the end of the meeting, we've got about four minutes left. So, so concerning relationships, the Dalai Lama said something like, if you have a problem with your relationships with somebody close to you, fix it as soon as possible. In this context, the benefits of incremental relationship repair, like good communication and being as loving as you can, and the continuous maintenance of your relationships are apparent and could prevent that harsh breakup or divorce later. So you could have an incredibly magical life depending on your approach to your relationship. Um, and 
And your relationships, as Kurt uh, has pointed out many times, really this is all about relationships. You know, it's like our relationships with one another, with nature and so on, uh, you know, and, and all animals and all life. So remember, ah, here's that thing. Remember like a continuously, a continuous infinity sign, continuous movement and cyclically changing in a, and out of alignment and living in love, balance and harmony are the fundamental keys to sustainability. Always returning into alignment with yourself, life, nature and the flows that sustain our existence are fundamental to our existence. Get too far out of alignment and your life becomes unsustainable. But it's necessary to get out of alignment because the moment you get out of alignment, you realize, oh, I've done something wrong. And then you come back into alignment, but you overshoot and you do something wrong on the other side. But it's in that falling in and out that we get stronger and more amazing and we learn and we grow. So these life altering events don't have to be the end of you. Hey, anybody? We've got two minutes. 100% agree. Mm. Yep. And it's a practice, as you know, Dennis. Um, we can get by a couple of events and then one will blindside us or even a little thing will throw us off track. So the idea is to keep the intention that we are spiritual beings and uh, we deserve to have a great life and to get back onto the track of, of alignment and congruence as soon as we can. Awesome. Awesome stuff, guys. This was an amazing meeting. I really appreciate your presence and your commitment and your ideas. They blow me out the water every time. Thank you very much. And we'll call it a day because Kurt has got a meeting coming up. Awesome. Okay. Great. Okay. Pleasure, Thanks, guys. guys. Have a great, great day. All, All right. right. Bye. Cheers. Bye.